Hi everyone, it's Michael. So today I wanted to uh, give you all a tutorial on cross ratios. Um, so some of you may already know uh, a lot about cross ratios. Um, some of you may have never heard of it even um, on my channel. So it's something that uh, very lately I've used uh, quite frequently in my videos. And so I wanted to give um, a lesson on it so I could get everyone sort of on the same page. Um, so here's a fun little problem. Uh, it's the first one that I've done where I use actual numbers. Um, so if you like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right. So to solve this problem, uh, we're going to use the idea of the cross ratio, um, which comes in handy in so many different problems. Uh, I would say it, it makes about maybe one in four uh, geometry problems uh, pretty easy if you know this concept. So uh, we want to calculate length HI and we have lengths B, C, C, D, and D, E and F, G, and G, H. So if you look at the figure, um, if you start with the four points B, C, D, and E, you get to the points F, G, H, and I by drawing lines through A through those four points and seeing where they meet another line, Fi. And there's this really interesting property of something called the cross ratio where um, it's, you can associate it to any four points on a line, so B, C, D, and E. And it turns out that the cross ratio of those four points is the same as the cross ratio of F, G, H, and I. So it's some kind of, the cross ratio is some kind of relationship between these lengths. Um, so I'm gonna write out here what I just said. So um, this is the cross ratio of BE with respect to C and D. And this is the cross ratio of F and I with respect to G and H. And what this says is that there's some relationship between the lengths of these three that's the same as the relationship between these lengths. Um, so what exactly is that relationship? Uh, so I'm gonna tell you right now. So what, I, what, what this cross ratio B, E, C, D is, you start with a segment B, E, and you figure out what ratio does C divide that into? So it divides it in the ratio two over four, which is one half. And then you figure out what ratio does D divide it into? So that would be three over three, which is one. And then you divide those two ratios. So it would be a half divided by one. So I'm gonna write that out here. So basically we have BC over CE. So this is the ratio that C divides um, the segment BE into. And then we have divided by BD over DE. So that's the ratio that D divides that segment into. Um, and I'm saying that the ratio of these two ratios has to be the same for B, C, D, and E as it is for F, G, H, and I. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm going to write out a little bit more algebra here, but the reason it's called the cross ratio or sometimes the double ratio is because it's literally a ratio of ratios. Um, so sometimes in my videos, instead of doing one ratio divided by another ratio, I'll just automatically write it as times the reciprocal. Um, but I just want to show you this um, just to introduce you to it. So if, if we start plugging in the numbers here, um, BC is 2, CE is uh, 4, and then BD and DE are both 3 um, just by adding the numbers. And then that has to be equal to FG is 3, and GI is, is 2 plus HI. FH is 5, um, and HI is just HI. And if you solve this equation, so I'll let you work out the algebra, but I, I made the numbers so that they would work, work pretty nicely uh, on purpose, and you end up getting HI is equal to 10. And if I use uh, GeoGebra's measurement tool and I try to measure HI, I find that indeed HI is equal to 10. So this is like a really interesting tool to solve uh, problems. Whenever you have like a point 
and you're drawing lines through a whole bunch of other points and they intersect another line like this, uh, the cross ratio is an extremely powerful tool. Um, now, why exactly it's true that the cross ratios are equal, um, I haven't proven it here, um, but maybe I'll do it in a later video. Okay. So now I'm going to show you um, another property of the cross ratio, which is that not only is it helpful in problems that, are, that just have a bunch of lines, but it's also helpful in problems with circles. So I'm going to sort of demonstrate that here. Okay. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I am going to take uh, the four lines from A through B, C, D, and E, and I'm going to see where they hit a circle, but that circle has to pass through A. So I have a circle passing through A, and I want to see where the lines A, B, A, C, A, D, and A, E meet the circle. So I'm going to let it meet the circle at K, L, M, and N. Okay. So what's really interesting is um, we can, uh, just as we had a cross ratio of the four points B, E, C, and D, uh, we also have a cross ratio of the four points K, N, L, and M. That's actually the same as that cross ratio. So if you remember um, the cross ratio between these four points that happened to equal a half, and what we can do is for any four points on a circle, we can also associate a cross ratio, and it happens to also equal a half. So how does that make sense? Or what, what does that even mean? Well, basically, if I took any other point on the circle and I did the same idea where I took the intersections through four points and it also gave me K, L, M, and N, then the cross ratio of those four points would also have to be the same. So I'm going to kind of show you this here, but it's, it's really pretty cool. Um, so basically the cross ratio is well defined for four points on a circle in addition to four points on a segment. Okay, so I'm going to pick some random other point on the circle, really any point works, and I'm going to call it O, and I'm going to draw the four lines through K, L, M, and N, and I'm going to let them meet another line. And it can be, um, so I have any point O, and I draw those four lines, and I let them meet any other line that you want. Um, so I'm going to call that line PQ. And, hmm, oh, there we go. And what's really interesting here is uh, the cross ratio of these four points, B, C, D, and E, has to be the same as the cross ratio of P, Q, R, and S. Um, so I am going to write this out here. But um, so now we're going to try to calculate the length of S, Q instead this time. So and we're given that the length of P, R is 4.3 and the length of R, S is 1.2. So like I mentioned, the cross ratio B, E, C, D, um, if you take the line through A uh, connecting those four points, it hits the circle at K, uh, A, E meets it at N, A, C meets it at L, and A, D meets it at M. So it's equal to this cross ratio K, N, L, M. So like I said, any four points on a circle also have a cross ratio. And then what's really cool is you can take the line from O through those four points, and O has to in the end be a point on the circle to be able to do this. So if you took some point off the circle, uh, it wouldn't work. Um, but since O is on the circle, you can draw the lines through those four points um, and then let it meet some other line. So in this case, PQ. Um, and the cross ratio has to stay the same all the way through, which is pretty cool. Um, so basically, the, um, if you draw the line OK, it meets the line PQ at point P. If you draw ON, it meets it at point Q. If you draw OL, it meets it at point R. And if you draw OM, it meets it at point S. Um, and the cross ratio KLMN has to be the same as the cross ratio PQRS. And so by transitivity, the two cross ratios the initial cross ratio has to be equal to the cross ratio of PQRS. 
Um, and so now we have enough to solve the problem just like we did before. Um, so I'm gonna write this out, but the cross ratio B, E, C, D, so you see what ratio does C divide the segment into, that's B, C over C, E, and you divide it by the ratio that D divides segment B, E into. But then we can do the same with P, Q, R, and S. So what ratio does R divide segment P, Q into? Um, and then what ratio does S uh, divide segment um, P, Q into? Um, and so I'm gonna write this out. So this side is the same as what I've mentioned before. Um, so BC is two, CE is four, and then you're dividing it by three over three. Um, and then PR is 4.3, RQ is 1.2 plus SQ. Uh, PS, if you add this up, is 5.5. And then we have to divide by SQ. Um, and if you solve the equation, you get SQ is 2.1, and if we use the measuring tool, uh, SQ is indeed 2.1. So I hope you all liked this video and learned a little bit about projective geometry. Uh, there's still a lot more theorems than just this, so I would say this alone is pretty useful. Um, and I think there was a video on my channel, maybe around video 11 or something, where I um, used the cross ratio in a very basic problem. Um, where, where it kind of just highlights exactly how it works. Um, but if you don't know it, it's, it's very, very useful. So I'd highly recommend learning it. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks, everyone.